a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Shop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Hi, this is Clay from Pollux, and we want to remind you to shop local with us for all of your jewelry needs and jewelry repairs. And remember that Christmas is coming up on us real soon. Thank you all for your support of 148 years. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. Good evening, everybody. Our Rowan here. We're coming to you live from Putnam Stadium in Doug Children's Field for this second round of the KHSAA 3A football playoffs. Tonight we have two schools that are familiar foes. This will be the third time in four years that they have met in the playoffs. The Ashland Tomcats, the winners of 3A District 7 with a record of 7-4, and four, and the Belfry Pirates, the runners-up in 3A District 8, also the defending 2021 state champions. They have a record of 6-5, and five, and we are excited to get this one underway. It should be a, yet another classic between these two schools. I'm Tyler Rowland, and with me on commentary tonight, we have Dr. Dwayne Porter, uh, who was a member of the 1975 state championship Ashland Tomcat team. And, man, it's good to have you on here. Thank you, Tyler. Actually, it's a pleasure and actually an honor to be here with such an upcoming icon for Ashland Sports, Tyler. I, I'm thrilled to be here at, on this beautiful, because every Friday night football is a beautiful night. It is. What a what a game it's going to be. The rains calm down quite a bit. We're feeling just a tad bit of a drizzle. We actually bought a couple pods with us to keep keep from getting rained on, but although the field is quite muddy, man, of course, quite a wind coming this way, though. We're going to take a break and come back. We'll talk about the Ashland Tomcats when we get back. You're watching My Town TV. changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. They always make you feel like family. When you go there, you feel like you are home. We trust the people that work there. This is my people.
Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. It is important to know where your food comes from. We source the best meats from the best animals. We are passionate about the animals and the process by offering custom and USDA processing services. At AW Meat House, we are a cut above the rest. We are back here on My Town TV, and we're getting ready for the second round of the 3A playoffs for the KHSAA between the Ashland Tomcats and the Belfry Pirates. We're going to open up talking about the home team, the Ashland Tomcats. A story, historic, a story program and a great history for the Ashland Tomcats as they've won several state titles. They won in 1967, or 1958, 1967 was their first KHSAA title. Um, and Ashland actually has many from the 20s, 30s, and one from 1942 unrecognized as well. But um, they won the at-large in 1975, 1990, and just last year, or two years ago, 2020, Ashland would play Belfry in the state semifinals, winning 10 to three en route to their first state championship in 30 years. And this year, though, Ashland has graduated a lot from a team last year that went seven and four, getting to the second round of the playoffs before re losing to East Carter. They started off rough. And right now, though, they have been on quite a roll after that one and three start. They have won six of their last seven and are the champions of 3A District 7. And now um, behind a balanced attack led by the number six rated passing game in 3A and LeBryant Strader, they have, been, they have been a tough team to stop. Of course, you also have running the ball Braxton Jennings and Strader run some there too. Tay Thomas and others on this team that helped carry the load. And Dr. Porter, how do you what do you think about tonight in terms of Ashland and coming into this game? How they've been performing this year and and the best things to happen for them to to be able to win this ball game. Well, I think the goal of every team, whatever sport it may be, is to be a better team today than they were yesterday. And that's exactly what we have here with Raceland. First game of the season, I was there and saw it and attended. And they are way more aggressive now. They are more exciting team, uh, defensively and offensively, as well as flying to the ball. I see the defense just shooting to the ball, flying up, blitzing. The play calling has been spectacular. Coach Tackett has really brought them on the last, last three games. They're a totally different team. And that's why they are here in the playoffs today. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what a background Coach Tackett has, an assistant at Ashland from 2007 through 2021 and his first season as a Tomcats head coach. And Tackett has won his third overall district championship as a coach this year. He coached from 2003 to 2006 at Fairview, winning two district titles there in 03 and 04 and has an overall record of 36 and 20. So definitely some much, much improvement from the Tomcats over the course of the year. We're going to take a break and come back. We'll talk about the Belfry Pirates here on My Town TV. Hey, this is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. With our ease of operations, we have the ability to come to you and we will make it happen for you. I trusted my family to it. I want to help you trust your family to it. It's Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. We're trying to help you make the right call. Hey Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. 
better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're on the move, you're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now, get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. We are back here on My Town TV, Tyler Rowland, along with Dwayne Porter, as we're getting ready to, so we're about three minutes away from the opening kickoff for this game, and the coin toss has just happened. Belfry won, and they elected to defer to the second half. And Belfry coming into this game, a record of six and five. The teams they have lost to this season have a combined record of 42 and 12. And they have played just like last year. They had a slow start with a tough schedule, but of course would bounce back and would win the 3A state championship, their second in a span of three years. And of course, Coach Philip Haywood, his eighth overall as a head coach. And Ashland now running down to take the field. But um, first off, starting, starting this one off, um, what are your thoughts it's on as the Tomcats Tom have come down the steps and the Scott Miller is out to greet him. And a lot of energy in this place. Two crowds that love their football. Rain's sure not going to stop them from showing up as Belfry comes out to their sideline as well. But if you're Belfry coming into this game, Ashland about middle of the pack when it comes to running defense in 3A. Belfry, of course, known for, for their, their play of um, of power running football and of course Caden Woolham last week over 300 yards rushing five touchdowns wow. against the Russell against maybe the greatest two and nine team of all time <laughs> in Russell and um, and that was in the absence of Dre Young but you've definitely seen some guys on on this Belfry team that have the capability of s stepping it up what do you do if you're Belfry coming in against against Ashland no, I was a uh player for here at Ashland from in 75, 6, and 7. And back then, Belfry ran the ball up the middle, and they ran the ball up the middle, and they ran the ball up <laughs> the middle. It hasn't changed in 45 years. So basically, they're a running team. They, they will run outside. They'll hit all the gaps, the A, B, and C gaps, and they'll hit outside as well. But uh, Ashland's on the offense for Ashland, Belfry's – um, defense, as far as uh, pass defense, is not um, superior. Ashland can mm -hmm. pass on them, and I think they will tonight, and they will be able to score on this Belfry defense. They'll have to stop mm -hmm. the run, obviously, and they know that up front. Yes, yeah, so as Belfry coming in with with one of the lower-ranked pass defenses in 3A, and, of course, Ashland has that as well, although I doubt Belfry will have that as their main – they could, but doubtful they'll have it as their main point of attack as we're getting ready to kick this one off. You can feel the energy in the crowd. Yeah, Belfry is number 30, 30 in 3A. They give up 131 passing yards a game. Af Ashland averages right around 163 a game through the air. So we'll see how this one, this one goes. That is number nine, Aiden McCoy, the senior. One of the few seniors on this Belfry, very young Belfry team. He kicks it off, and it's going to be a short kick and caught by Austin Nichols. He gets up to the 30-yard line and is brought down. And it looks it like that was number Austin 29, Nichols. Jeremiah Austin, a freshman that was in on Ace that tackle. Coddle, Zach Blackburn on the stop. Ace Cottle and Zach Blackburn in on that as well. 
And Ashland coming in too, and some say maybe the two youngest teams in 3A coming in here today as, as Belfry plays seven freshmen total across offensive defense. And Ashland has a couple that play as well. That's Jennings and Strader in the backfield at the bottom of your screen. Terrell Jordans and Asher Atkins at wide out. It's a quick throw to Jordan, caught, and he's looking for room. Cuts back, and he's going to go around the middle. Has an wow. opening. Jordan Whoa. finds the seam. Whoa. Terrell Jordan. No way. Wow. No way. Keep going, baby. 30, 20. Keep going. 10. Whoa. Oh, Terrell what a start. Jordan. What wow. a start. I thought he, they had him back there. So they go to Terrell Jordan on the screen pass, and he is going to get down to the, down into Belfry ter territory, close to the close to about the two yard line. What a bizarre event to open up the game! As Austin Nichols, number 22, checking in, he had a 16 yard touchdown last week. Terrell Jordan, the 29th ranked receiver in 3A as he gets a big reception, 71 yards on the play. And Belfry played it really well. That was all Trey. Yes, they did. Belfry, as usual, their outstanding defense. And it's handed off to Braxton Jennings, and he will pick up touchdown number 16 on the regular season. Congratulations to him. So Ashland opens up a screen play to Terrell Jordan. He finds the seam and gets through for 71 yards, and then Braxton Jennings on the one-yard plunge picks up touchdown number 16 on the year. Last week, he became the 26th Tomcat to rush for fit at least 15 touchdowns in a season, as now Church coming in to attempt the PAT. Snap is coming from Troy Gardner. Hold coming from Brandon Houston. Extra point attempted by Brian Church. And it's up, snap, Church's kick is good. So the Tomcats take a 7-0 lead early here at Putnam Stadium in a bizarre set of events to start. And we're going to take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. We are back here on My Town TV as it's a short kick from Brandon Houston and Belfry recovers it. And that looks like, that looks like Jeremiah Austin, the freshman who also was in on a tackle earlier on kickoff. So Ashland gets a score, a 71 yard screen pass from Terrell Jordan that gets to the one yard line of Belfry and then a one yard plunge from Braxton Jennings. So Belfry coming out. Watch for Woolham, number 11. He is at the top of your screen at the wing position. Over 300 yards last week against Russell. That's Varney at quarterback, number three, a freshman. And he stepped in and got, done a good job this season. At, at running back at the, or in the backfield is number 32. That's Braxton Hatfield, and they go to him up the middle. Colin Howard was in on that tackle, and Hatfield's going to get a yard or two. And that's a, that's a big, strong guy. Hatfield also one of the best linebackers in 3A. I'm sure we'll say a lot of his name tonight is second and eight now for the Belfry Pirates here. Second and eight at the 38. So that's Varney and Hatfield again. They're going to give it to Hatfield. And Hatfield's going to get about three. Good start, good start. They're running right up that A gap. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Belfry gets some good. Landon Himes was in on that tackle, so now Belfry spreading it out a little bit. That's Hatfield and Varney in the backfield. At the bottom of your screen is number 18, Aiden Burke in the slot. He leads the team in receptions, and, and that is number 10, Ace Cottle. Um, Woolham is on the at the slot back position, and they go to him on the out route. It's caught. And Jared Brown gets there, and he's out of bounds. We'll see the spot goes. That'll be a gain of two. That's a 26 pass completion on the year for, for Chase Varney. And so Belfry coming out now, lining up to punt here as it's fourth and about three. Jared was all over that. He was right on top of the whole way. He, he read it from the beginning. And punting, that looks like that's Woolham coming in there to punt. I'd really be watching this if I'm Ashland. Yes. That kid can flat play. Cam Davis, the freshman, back to return. And Woolham with the punt. And it's going to roll into the there hands of Cam Davis. He's looking Go, for room, cuts back. Davis has a hole. Davis close to getting free. And that was a tackle by number 43, Lakeith Struther. The sophomore gets the tackle for Bell, this young Belfry team, and now Ashland will get the ball back here on the starting from the 32-yard line here. The Ashland, the last play of the set, two plays, a 71-yard screen pass to Terrell Jordan and a one-yard Braxton Jennings plunge. As Ashland coming out at the top of the screen, that's Brandon Houston and Terrell Jordan. Asher Atkins at the bottom of the screen, Nate Freeze at tight end. Jennings in the backfield, and it's going to be handed off to him up the middle, and Ashland gets a plunge, and they'll get about seven yards. I like what LeBron did. As soon as he came off the field after the touchdown, he came to the sideline and reviewed the screen, reviewed the plays that he had in Belfry defense. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's a Belfry defense that has improved considerably over the year. And again, looking at their five losses, those teams a combined record of 42 and 12, many of them in state championship con contention as it's second and three for the Tomcats. They're gonna go back to Jennings again. He's gonna stay on his feet and get a couple more. Braxton Jennings on the carry. That's Jennings' third carry. Noah Brown with the tackle. That's Noah Brown on the stop. It's a big play here to establish the running mm -hmm. game if they need. Third and two, and one and a half it looks like. It looks like they'll need to get about past there if they get past their own 42. As that's going to be there. Ashland going to, they're going to, to put Jordan at the slot back position. <laughs> Adkins and and Houston, at, I thought they're going to throw it. And Ashland Strayer has some time. It's thrown to he Houston. Caught it. And caught. Houston. Wow. It was complete. And that's Houston's 29th reception of the year, and that will be a fresh set of downs for the Tomcats. That was a good pass. He had to put it there. Straighter two for two now for 84 yards. So two first downs early for the Tomcats. And the ball snapped and back to Jennings. He's going to run and get Braxton a couple. Because that was number 32, Braxton Hatfield Jay on the tackle. And the field is wet, but it doesn't side. seem to be holding up their footing. They seem to be fine with uh, cutting. Although three, it looks like you mm -hmm. could plant a little bit of rice out there mm -hmm. if you wished. Yeah. <laughs> Braxton Hatfield, number, ranked number four in 3A this year in Fumbles forced. He's forced three this year when been a force from the, no pun intended, from the linebacker spot. Quick throw to Houston, and that is incomplete. I might have lost his footing a little bit. He threw it behind him a bit. Mm -hmm. Got his step. That's a third and eight now for Ashland. They need to get to the, they need to get to about the Belfry 38 to get the first down. Here was 7.36 to go in the first quarter. Ashland started off with the ball. Terrell Jordan zigged and zagged his way to 71 yards on a screen pass. And then the next play, Braxton Jennings would 
would plunge in from one yard as Ashland goes to Twins wideouts. As Tay Thomas is now in the game in the backfield and he's going to go in motion. Strader drops back and he's looking and he's brought down. And that's, who else? We just, or no, that's actually, I thought that was Hatfield for a second. That is actually Hunter Hilton. And Hunter, one of several freshmen that play on this Belfry team. Hilton, a good job getting back there and and fighting through blockers. And now Everybody was covered. Yeah, that was really good coverage too. Belfry was definitely ready for that. I thought for a second that was going to be a quarterback draw play. Uh-huh. <laughs> I agree. It looked yeah. like it lined up like that. Back for the Pirates. So now Brandon Houston will punt and Caden Woolham is back to return for Belfry here, who leads or, or trails Ashland seven to nothing at this point. And good balls up and good punt. And that's gonna go. To the uh, the one and one yard line. Yeah, and that's what. Yeah, but Woolham's that type of athlete that can make it a. I mean, he only he had I believe 77 carries coming into this game, but 16 touchdowns on the season. And that's a kid that like is flat electric when he touches the ball. And your excellent receiver Houston just made a beautiful punt. Yes, you, that was a, a definitely a good way for to try to pin Belfry back as it's going to be first down now for the Pirates as they come out here. That's Varney and looks like that's Hatfield back there at the wing position. I see I see Ace Cottle and, and that's handed off. They're going to the big guy up the middle. Hatfield, the ball so Hatfield will get his third carry for Belfry and he's going to get a couple. Isaiah Ingram, Isaiah Ingram Sawyer, Sawyer Eden's on the stop. Both Ingram and Eden's ranked in the the top tacklers and amongst the top 30 ta tacklers in 3A. So second and seven for Belfry now as we're approaching the six minute mark in the second quarter. Really gotta watch that misdirection if you're Ashland. Woolham in motion, hand it off is. again to Hatfield and it's going to be a gain of one or two. It looks like Ingram was in on that. You can feel the pop when Hatfield hits that hole. Absolutely. Like Jackson, Billups Jackson Billups was in on that. It's and Varney, the quarterback, he has a great mesh with his running backs. He hands it. He, you can't tell who he's handing it to. With yeah, that's so impressive. Only a freshman is Varney because he, he's – that's one key to, and speaking of big, speaking of Varney, big shout out to Matt Varney of Belfry for all the help this week as Ace Cottle's going to get it around the left side. He's looking for room and he's going to get close. Chain gang kind of got, hang up. we'll see what the spot is. Looks like it's going to be, that's going to be, but looks like he got it. So the first down for Belfry. That will be their first first down of this and one. 11, first and 10, Belfry. So, Ace Cottle, whose uncle Micah was a 1,000-yard rusher in the late 1990s for Belfry, as we have some whistles. His And his father, Jonah, was a 1,000-yard rusher in the early 2000s, as Ashland looks it's like a pre-snap penalty. First and so it'll be first and five for the Pirates now from their own 16 here. As Varney at the quarterback position and let's hand it off and Belfry again attacking the middle. And that'll be a gain of about three. Well, I like the way the Himes kid plays. Braxton Hatfield, mm -hmm. the ball carrier. So Hatfield, five carries so far. Landon Eden and, and Himes on. Cole Christian on the stop. Stop Cole Christian in on it as well. When but, Himes lines up mm -hmm. in defense, he's Second he's down, got go. he's going to hit somebody, and he's going to find the ball. I've watched mm -hmm. him several plays, and he's he's around the ball every time. Yes, and that's so so important to have a player that's real 
but that has a nose for the ball like that as it's handed off and looks like yet again, is that going to be Hatfield? Or no, that was first down. Woolen got that time. So that's Woolen's first carry. And Belfry will have their second first down on this drive. Tay Thomas was in on that one, so Woolham, a, so a fresh set of downs for Belfry now. So first and ten here as they're going to hand it off, and that will be Hatfield again. So they're really trying to <laughs> give it to Hatfield right now. Six carries for the big guy. I'm going to double check because I think, yes, Hatfield had 23 carries Second coming into seven. the game tonight. And tonight he has six so far. Of course, that's, um, that's you know, in the absence of Dre Young, that they're going to try to have somebody's going Good to try play. to. Good play. Yes, that's a big stop by Isaiah. Isaiah Ingram was in on that one as well. He's got an instinct mm -hmm. for the ball as well, the inside linebacker. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Ingram, who the senior and been a great asset to this Ashland program here as Belfry now. They're going to go to the wishbone formation They're coming here. right at you. They need to get to their own 35 to get the first down. That's going to be Cottle on the carry again. Cottle close, and he's going to have just enough. Cottle kind of dan dances back a little bit, and that gives him his second carry and two carries and two first downs for Ace Cottle. Ingram on the tackle there, and Belfry with their third first down on this drive, which they started from the one. Here is Belfry now coming out in the, going to be again the flex bone formation. That's going to be Varney at quarterback. Looks like wow. that might be Austin. Two tight ends. Fullback position. Motion. And it's going to be a pass, and Varney's going. Oh. Looks like he was expecting somebody to be in the okay, spot. He was looking one direction through the other. Yeah, Belfry and, oh, flag. Not sure what this one is. Um, looks like it came afterward. We're, we'll see what the call is. And that's going to be, so they're going to call grounding on Belfry. Hmm. I'm not sure on. There was nobody near one. the ball, but. Yeah because it wasn't really thrown. It looks like he was expecting somebody to be in the area, but that's going to be about a, that's going to be a big loss for Belfry. Also a loss of downs. Second and 20, that's 26. So second and 20 for Belfry now. Fumble. And the ball comes out and we'll see who gets it. Ashland indicating they have it. And no signal, yeah, it looks like they, Looks like they do. Sawyer Edens with the fumble recovery. Ashland only their sixth fumble recovery this year, ranked number 29 and 3A in that statistic. So that's definitely a big help for, for them in this one. As of course this wet field, no question, Dr. Porter, a factor. Absolutely, absolutely. As Ashland now coming out in shotgun. That's Strader and Jennings in the backfield. Asher Adkins is at the top of your screen. Two totally different type of offenses here. They are. Yeah, it's going to be depend, depend on who establishes their tempo as, as Hat, Hatfield gets a tackle on. Yep. And now that's going to be gain of two, maybe three. Tyler, you tell me he was good, Hatfield. Boy, he is. He's all over the place on defense. Second and eight and yeah. 24. Yeah, you could probably, as good as he is, you could probably just close your eyes and say, well, I'm guessing Hatfield made the tackle and probably be right quite a few yeah. times. As Jordan and Houston are at the Spread bottom again. of your screen at wide out. As this ball snaps straight or fakes it, he's looking for an open player and he's going to run it instead. And the big guy's going to carry the ball. He's a load and he's drugged down by three or four Belfry defenders as he gets about five. 
I think the Belfry boy got his bell rung on that one. I think he's seen a few bats in his Belfry. That's uh, of course he sh he didn't see the cat that hit him. Straighter a <laughs> he has has oh a flag down too that may be holding against oh, Ashland at it or oh illegal man downfield looks like so that's going to get send the that's Ashland's second penalty so far and Belfry with one for grounding. Well, he the ball back to the 37 yard line. So that's going to be a. Uh, a loss of yardage, so it'll be second and what was a second and eight is now a second and 18 second down, for the Tomcats. That's at the bottom of your screen, that's Jennings and Houston at wide out along with Jared Brown as Ashland's going five wide. And we've got a quick timeout taken. We'll take one too. You're watching My Town TV. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game. We're back here on My Town TV. Ashland took their first time out of the half as Belfry still has all three, so second and 18, or second and 21, actually, for the Tomcats. They're going to need uh, 21 yards as they're going five wide as Strader throws it over the middle. It's caught by Jennings. Jennings on the way to his first receiving touchdown of the season, 37 yards from LeBryant Strader, who just picked up his 17th. Passing touchdown this year, and Ashland taking a two-score lead with 41 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Wow. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. He, he's... he's the, Church to attempt the extra point from the wow. Houston. Brian Church will attempt the extra point. So Jennings, his first receiving touchdown this season, 37 yards, and Strader now three for four through the air for 121 as Church's kick is up and it is no good. So Ashland leading 13 to zero here with 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's pop and caught by Belfry, they're going to run this one back and tackle by so that is Mikey Hilton, the junior on this team. And like we're talking during break, if, 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 if as Isaiah Luckett was on the stop, but Ashland up 13 to nothing right now. But um, I remember this based on the history of the series. 2006, Ashland led 14 to nothing. Dustin May would get red hot for Belfry. Ashland barely hung on 28-27 in overtime. 2009, Ashland led 14 to nothing at Belfry. Thomas Varney would get red hot. Ashland would win on a fourth and one conversion, a run from Josh Alber. They'd hang on and win 22 to 20 in that one. So um, this has happened before in this series as Landon Eden yes. gets the tackle on Caden Woolen. I saw the coaches also telling all the players or instructing them that it's not time to get complacent. 
Mm -hmm. Do not get complacent with this team and, and strive for it and go for it and do not give up. Keep the pedal to the metal, as you said. Yes, and this will be the first. Um, if Ashland were to do this, of course, this will be a lot big. But we're actually we're going to conclude the first quarter. So Ashland opens up with an early 13-0 lead here at Putnam Stadium, Dutch Childers Field. But we have a lot of football left. We'll be right back. You're watching My Town TV. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. At Pathways, we're transforming not just ourselves, but the way you'll see healthcare. Introducing our all new certified behavioral health clinic, an evolutionary shift in our approach with a focus on you as a whole. Our team will coordinate care, dialed in on both your physical and mental well-being. It's a holistic approach to how our consumers will seek and receive health care. We are so proud to be able to provide these new services right here in our local communities. Learn how health care is changing for you at anewpathway.org. We're back, Ashland leading 13-0 here starting the second quarter. Belfry now coming out as Varney throws. It's caught by Burke and he's tackled by Braxton Jennings. So Chase Varney is 27th pass completion of the year. And Belfry, they can pass the ball, but they don't throw it often as, of course, uh, and a fun fact, Philip Haywood ha has eight state championship wins and in those eight wins, his teams have only completed two passes for 14 yards in those games. No way. So, yeah. I had no idea. That's <laughs> wild. Yeah, that's, um, he <laughs> loves to run the football. Yes. And right now, mm -hmm. Belfry is not the aggressor. Yeah, Ashland's aggressive. They're going at him. Mm -hmm. And Varney, or, or Burt, gets his second reception. That'll be a first down, a gain of seven yards. Varney, the freshman, is three for four for a total of 15 yards and a first down. So now. And Belfry's trying to spread it out right now mm -hmm. so they can get that running game back up in the middle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was actually fun. Before Haywood, um, uh, in the late 1990s, um, Haywood actually ran a lot of spreading it out, shotgun type formations when he coached as that one's handed off up the middle. No, it's that pitched a, out. Yes. Cottle has room on the outside. That was hold. He was held. Yeah, he got it too. He so was that's held. That's going to be a, a penalty flag coming down. So this one will likely come back. And Woolham was holding him. It was obvious. It was right there in front of us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, looks like, looks like just got a little too on the a good aggressive block, just not quite. Uh, but, but, of course, that's – especially these power running teams. That'll happen sometimes on those plays to the outside. Cottle, though, a heck of a heck of a good run on his part that will likely be. We'll see what they're going to call it holding officially. But Cottle, who had 180 yards in his first game, that was against Pulaski County. Pulaski, a 9-2 team in 5A, a heck of a program. So Cottle, definitely you can see his speed to the outside and his ability to be a threat running the ball. Um, Belfry with so each team now with, that's Belfry's second penalty, the other, each team with two penalties, Ashland with an offsides and an eligible man downfield, Belfry with intentional grounding and now a holding. So this will be first down and 20 for the Pirates as that's, that's Cottle and Hatfield in the backfield, Woolman in motion, Cottle to throw as that is Incomplete. Out. So Cottle's fifth pass attempt. And that was attempted for Ace Cottle, so Landon Eden was on the coverage there. Eden, who's really really done a good job defensively this year for the Tomcats. So second down now for the Belfry Pirates. And good sportsmanship over there by Belfry players on the sideline, helping out Ashland players. Yeah, always good to, always warm to see Cold as it is outside, always warm to see good moments <laughs> like that as, as Woolham in motion and Varney with the pitch good. to him. Woolham has a plenty of room 
as he's being chased down by Cam Davis, but not before he will get a first down. So Caden Woolen breaks loose, and you see why he's a threat to break loose. He, that is his fourth carry now, and he has 29 yards. 21 yards. He ran the option to perfection that time. Mm -hmm. He took the hit, sent it out to his back. That's mm -hmm. like the old jaw school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a team that. 1975, Ashland would have two 1,000-yard rushers that season. Ironically, every time in 1967, 90, and 20, Ashland played Belfry in the state tournament. The 1975 team did not play Belfry in the tournament, but they played them in the season. Yes. So every time they've it's gone through Belfry in some form or fashion, as Belfry now handed off to Hatfield, and the big guy's going to plow his way on his seventh carry for four yards. So Haywood definitely looking to definitely looking to try to wear down this Ashland defense by having forcing them to have to tackle Hatfield a bunch here early. Second down and seven at the 42. The second down and seven now for Belfry. Love the way Ashland's playing, they're hungry. <clears throat> and that is as man in motion and it's Good. option again. And Cottle with it on the outside and Braxton Good. Jennings is able to get there and get it. That'll be a gain of one or two. <laughs> Tay Thomas got the quarterback that time. They're making that quarterback pay when he pitches it. Mm -hmm. Keep getting in his face. He's going to qu want to quit doing that. Down at five <laughs> yeah, so Belfry now a third and a four or five situation. They need to get to the Ashland 36 to get the <laughs> first down. They're going to come out now in Flexbone formation isolated at the top of your screen that's number 15 Blake Hurley the senior at wide out and Woolham is actually not in I see Hatfield and Cottle and so timeout Ashland that's going to be their second we'll take a break you're watching my town TV a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. It is important to know where your food comes from. We source the best meats from the best animals. We are passionate about the animals and the process by offering custom and USDA processing services. At AW Meat House, we are a cut above the rest. Big third down coming up for Belfry here, as it was Belfry who told the timeout, but actually, as it's- He a moved, he did two. move. He sure yeah. did move. So that's going to be the Belfry's third penalty. That's going, to, that'll be their first pre-snap penalty though. Belfry and Ashland each with one pre-snap. Belfry with a false start. Ashland who had an offsides early, so. Third down and 10 that Belfry will need to get to the Ashland 36 to get the first down. Big Jack Stacy of uh, Belfry, their big 300 pounds, number 70 guard. He, he seems to be a politician. He <laughs> likes to talk to the Ashland players a lot. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's yeah. saying. Maybe he's inviting them to dinner. <laughs> Marnie, another option play. It goes to Woolham on the outside and he's met by Landon Eaton. Wow. So, Landon Eden gets back there and does a good job getting in the pads and making a disciplined tackle. And Belfry will now have it third of a fourth and about 13 here. That was a that was good discipline by Eden fighting off that block. Absolutely, just aggressive going to the tackler, not waiting on him. Mm -hmm. Going to the ball carrier, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
As, as Woolen will come in to punt. Now is a, a false start. I think really hurt Belfry on that. And a good job by Ashland's defense to hold up on that option play. As Woolham now, he has it. Woolham, he'll punt it. That one goes way up. Fair catch called by Davis. And that one goes back into Ashland territory. Oh, no. And so Ashland will now start first and 10 from the one. So both teams in this game. I wonder when, gosh, I wish I had a, had some kind of fact on that, like historically a game where both teams had a drive at some point in the game starting from the one-yard line. Mm -hmm. Well, this would be a great uh, time to get 99 yards, score a touchdown. That will definitely take some yeah, of the air out of Belfry. Or they're going to actually – actually they're going to spot that at the 16. Um, hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. So that's going to be – Belfry not really protesting anything, so I guess. So Houston, Adkins, and it could be the rain on my glasses clouding something. <laughs> Houston, Adkins, and Jordan at wide out. It's handed off up the middle to Ashland. The Braxton Jennings is going to get three, maybe That's four on his sixth carry. Jennings, a sophomore. Jeremiah Austin, and Jeremiah Austin and Lakeith Struther on the tackles for Belfry. And other scores, Boyd trails Boyle County 21 to nothing right now. And Greenup and Lawrence are tied at seven. They played a classic game early this, earlier this year. I anticipate we'll see that again as, as Strader drops back, thrown to, caught by Asher Adkins, and he's going around the left side or right side trying to get room, and he'll get close to a first down but not quite there. Terrell Jordan gave a good block there at the end. Um, I like the way they do that. They don't ever, they don't seem to ever give up. The play's not down until the whistle blows. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's Adkins, who had a school record 15 receptions against George Washington earlier this season. Asher Adkins ranked number 24 in 3A in receiving as Strader and Jennings are now in the backfield along with Austin Nichols and a ball snapped and flags come out. And that is going to be a false start against the Tomcats. So both teams on their quite a, that's Ashland's third penalty. And both two of Ashland's three penalties have been pre-snap. They had that false start and they had an offsides earlier. I saw somebody move on that left side of the line. Or yeah, left side from our vantage point. So Ashland Neat will need to get to about the 28-yard line, their own 28 to get the first down. They've got two wideouts on each side. As Strader drops back, he's looking, has some time. He's going to go. No, he's going to run it, and the big guy's going to get close. Oh, that's going to be real close. And we'll see. He might have got it. Um, that is, that's going to be a... So good, good job, and Belfry's doing a good job getting back and covering those passes too with those receivers. LeBron can beat you on the run. He's a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> he makes the, some of those guys pay when they try to tackle him. That's true. As Strader now will come back out in the shotgun. Ashland going trips with Jordan Adkins and Houston at the top of your screen as – the ball snapped, counter play, going that to Braxton sweet. Jennings. And that was sweet. <laughs> Braxton Jennings, the ball carrier. just the way you ride it up, just like that. Guard tackle Braxton split. Mm -hmm. And Braxton Hatfield on the tackle. That'll be a gain of about six. 27 yards rushing for Jennings so far on seven carries, including a touchdown run. I'm impressed with the play calling, too, for Ashland. They're, they're mixing mm -hmm. it up really well. And this is Ashland now. And then they're going to go back to Jennings, and he surges up the middle. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was a shoestring. Ashland, is a, Ashland averages around 180 yards a game. That can be a little bit deceptive, and the reason I say that is because as of another fresh set of downs for Ashland, but Ashland's, uh, the reason I say that's deceptive is because in this stretch where they've won six of the last seven, they've averaged right around 220 a game on the ground. So now they, as Jennings you, in particular. But you got to fear their pass. 
And Houston catches a screen, and he's going to get close to a first down. He's about a yard, yard and a half short. Scoring where they place it. And congratulations, first off, uh, that is Houston's 30th reception, and this now becomes the first Tomcat team wow. to have three receivers pick up 30 receptions in the same season. That's impressive. Yeah, that's a, a heck of an – that just shows uh, the balance on this team as a receiver, I and mean, they've got some Garn. Future looks bright. <laughs> yeah, this is Houston, only a junior. And Faith Strader's going to carry it again, and the big guy's going to get a first down and then a couple. Mm -hmm. And that's two first downs for Strader on this drive running the ball. And the fifth time he's carried it, so. Ashley down the, the Belfry 44. I see the, the uh, Belfry defense is walking with concrete shoes. That means they're getting tired. They, I don't know if they want to be here. Yeah, they definitely look at, they're looking for something to go their way right now as, as they're get <clears throat> Ashland picking up a, some first downs on this drive as the ball snapped and it's going to be a pass. Strader's going to go for the wow. long ball. Wow. Caught by Brandon wow. Houston and Brandon Houston. That was a Houston, beautiful pass. Yes, Brandon Houston becomes the fourth Ashland Tomcat to have nine or more touchdown receptions in one season. Congratulations to him. That's his third reception on the game. And Strader now six for seven from the field. And he has, I'm calculating it, 178 through the air as Ashland's going to take a quick timeout. They may go for two. We're going to come back. You're watching My Town TV. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to an awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. They always make you feel like family. When you go there, you feel like you are home. We trust the people that work there. This is my people. Stay calm, we're on our way. Was that in Vanna Ashland scores on a 44-yard pass from LeBron Strader to Brandon Houston, who caught his ninth touchdown pass this season. And Ashland going for two, fakes it to Terrell Jordan. Strader looking, nobody's open. He's going to run it in himself. Nice slip. But a, a, a fl flags come flying. Holding against Ashland, so that will negate the play. Ashland will have a... Another shot at it here, but from a lot further back. And we'll see what Coach Tackett decides to do. That 44-yard pass was Brady-esque. That was pretty. You couldn't have put it in a better spot. Mm -hmm. And Strader, that was his 18th touchdown pass of the season. And I think that, I'll double check, but that is the most, I believe, for any sophomore that has played quarterback at Ashland. And now Strader leading the team back out as it's going to be Ashland will attempt the two-point conversion. Here, Terrell Jordan in motion, and Strader drops back. Belfry sends pressure. It's oh, nice one-handed catch. Wow, that was pretty. And Braxton Jennings, what a reception. That gets, was pretty. Wow, Ashland taking a 21 to nothing lead. We're going to take take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. Hey, this is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. With our ease of operations, we have the ability to come to you and we will make it happen for you. I trusted my family to it. I want to help you trust your family to it. 
It's Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. We're trying to help you make the right call. Brandon Houston to kick off now. It's a short kick, and into the hands of Belfry recovered. That's number two, Mikey Hilton, the junior. What a what a play! Braxton or LeBryant Strader right now six for seven through the air, 178 yards passing, including a 37 yarder to Braxton Jennings and a 44 yarder to Brandon Houston. Terrell Jordan would catch a 71-yard screen pass to open the game up. And now Belfry coming out here with 3.02 to go in the half now. Varney leading the team out. It's handed off, and Varney Fumble. pitched, and it's dropped by Caudill. I think Ashland got that. They do. Sawyer Edens, wow. They Belfry do. turns it over. Ashland, their, again, their, their second fumble recovery of this game. You keep getting in the face of that quarterback, he's going to make mistakes. And he threw that one. So a flag down, that's going to be a sideline warning on Ashland. Second one will result in a yardage penalty. So Ashland will get the ball back deep in Belfry territory. And here's the bizarre thing now. I mean, there's a lot to go. I mean, I remember watching Russell in 2005 dominate Belfry 20 to nothing in the first half. Belfry would come back and nearly take the thing at the end of the second. I know these are different teams, different years, but sure. same. You know, anything with Philip Haywood on it, you yeah. know it's not going to be. It's Friday night. It's, yeah, anything with him. He's he's going to have these guys back in, and I'm sure it's, it's Strader with Austin Nichols in the backfield now on this first and ten, and Strader's going to run it, and the big guy's going Jeez. to run for about seven. Yep. So LeBryant Strayer, actually that was his fifth carry. I thought he had five already, but Braxton Hatfield with the tackle. That's going to be a gain of seven. Five carries for 23 yards right now for Strader and a couple of first downs. Ashland with, I have them at three first downs on the ground. Tackett is, uh, has seen that uh, we're dominating the line of scrimmage. And so he's mm -hmm. going to keep running in the middle. He'll keep doing that. And counter play to Jennings. He's going to cut back. And Jennings close Touchdown. to oh, that's just, no. might have been. I think he was just a half yard short. But that'll be a gain of 13 for him. Jennings closer and closer to that thousand yard mark. Noah Brown on the stop for Belfry. So I, now wow. I can't see it from here, but I'd like to see a replay on that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get that. That pleasure of seeing that. So now, yeah, that's I me. Mean, hopefully we're, we're hopefully getting there as it's first and goal from the one now for the Tomcats. They're going to stay in shotgun Nichols in the backfield along with Strader and Jennings. I'm going to say they give it to Jennings here again. And no, Strader's going to take it in. He got it. And he gets the touchdown. Ashland taking a 27-0 lead as LeBryant Strader gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. So Ashland piling it on early as they get two touchdowns on, on the air, or from the air, two on the ground. And Houston will now hold for Brian Church, who will attempt the PAT for Ashland. I think Belfry's in a fog. They haven't seen what, they don't know what's hit them. Yeah, this is all a bit. I did not exp I'm expect with you. this. And the field goal's it's, up. It looks good. It is, it is good. Ashland leading 28 nothing here with 1.41 to go in the first half. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery.
here as we're getting ready to so Ashton scores on a one yard plunge, a 28 yard drive, and we have flags down. Looks like Ashland jumped off sides and will move back five yards. But man, at Belfry, two turnovers right now that Ashland has recovered and had excellent field position to start with. So makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And I like this kickoff team. These guys are running down the field, chasing down the field like it's their last dinner at the other end. And they're chasing to see who gets the, the dinner. Yeah, uh, that's true. I watched the last two kickoffs, and they're they're down. They're flying down. Yeah, and that, that's one thing. And you have to do, to do that against um, a Belfry. And um, the difference in good and great is the little things. And that's what they're mm -hmm. doing tonight. And as Belfry, you, you look at their program, eight state championships. The first for Philip Haywood coming in an overtime battle against Elizabethtown in 2003. And this is the third time in recent history these two programs have met in the playoffs, 2019, 20, and 21, or 22. They've not 21, but as, as that's hit. returned. And Ashland getting right back there. The ball might have squirted it out. That looked like Isaiah Luckett that got back there. And that was Jeremiah Austin, Isaiah Luckett. <laughs> they're, they're hungry. They want it. I don't know if Luckett, if he ran downfield or he flew downfield, but <laughs> he got there fast as Belfry will now have it first and 10. So the Pirates looking to get something going. I can't think of many times you know, a team has come back from this deficit you never know, of course. I know Ironton, I believe, against Bel Air in 2005 would t tie it down 28 nothing, and and they'd lose in two overtimes, but that's the only one really I could think of playoff related as Varney was passing and under some pressure, and it's thrown out of bounds. That's smart. And I see the players on the Ashland sideline somewhat jubilant. I see the coaches as if they're down 28 to nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they are. Chad's still going right. strong. Mm -hmm. Hines was in his face again. Yeah, that's some. Yeah, and then, gosh, Ashland and Belfer, they play, played in the regular season four times, for, five times from 2006 to 2012. This one's handed off up the middle to, to Woolham, and he'll get three. Willem with 29 yards on six carries so far. Sawyer Eden's on the stop. Eden's the leading tackler on Ashland. So third down now for Belfry. They will need to get to their own 48 to get the first down. Well, Ashland, gosh, they're getting the, the sideline is turning around, getting the crowd hyped. And they are really looking to just that relentless. And Belfry had that same a form of attack three years ago when they won 41 to seven. Pitch to Woolham and oh, Woolham down the right sideline and he's going to get the first down and then some. A good run by Woolham. And Khalil Vaughn makes the tackle. I'm not sure who are, who's on contain on the outside, whether they're wanting the uh, cornerback or the outside linebacker. Somebody's. Hmm. They're getting to the quarterback, and he's making the pitch, but I'm uh, not sure who's who's contained. Yeah, that's uh, especially having to contain. And that's a uh, low. That's his second 20-plus yard run in this one. He's up to 55 yards on the ground now. Woolham, who ran for over 300 on Russell last week, as it's second and 10 now from the 34-yard line. So now a momentary, and the timeout situation too. Ashland has one, Belfry has two remaining. As they're, they are looking, they will pass. pass it. Varney has time, throws caught, and oh, oh, nearly intercepted by Houston. That was in his hands, it was there. So Varney now three for seven, 15 yards and a first down. But a little bit of luck for Ashland on that one as Woolen was in, had ran a pretty good out route there. So Belfry now third and 10 coming from the Ashland 34 yard line here with 23 seconds 
remaining in the first half. They definitely have to stop them here. Next two plays, they'll go fourth down, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, definitely. I'd say definitely. Yeah, it'll be probably they may try to get a first down and a quick stoppage of clock here. Varney throws, and sure enough, they go to Cottle on the outside. Cottle, though, he stays, and he's going to get shoved out of bounds. So Belfry now may – looks like Khalil Vaughn again on the tackle there. So that gets Belfry deep into Ashland territory now as that will be first and ten. That will be a gain of 14 yards. So Varney, the eight tight, he's, he, he's thrown it tonight. So. Tell you what, Isaiah Ingram is, it says 150 pounds here in the program. He plays like a 220 pounder. Yeah, he's way bigger. As Jared Brown with the deflection on that pass for Ashland. So 12 seconds to go here. Nine times now, Belfry has thrown it in this this game. Compare that they've had 52 pass attempts all season <laughs> coming into tonight. So, again, not to say that they can't. Or they certainly can. They just don't do it often. They would actually pick up 100 yards passing in 2019 against Ashland. The Isaac Dixon would have a 77-yard touchdown reception. I think in that that's game. a credit to Ashland's defense stopping the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's – as they Very get back good. there, Mullum. He's in bounds still. So six seconds, and Coach Haywood immediately taking the timeout. As Mullum's going to get about a yard. Cam Davis and Colin Howard on the stop. We'll keep it here, though. And Dr. Porter, I know that you played on the 1975 Jaws team that would win the, the that would be a state champion, would win the state at large title. Talk about that experience and what it was like. <laughs> well, I was only a sophomore and I was a 100 pound sophomore. In fact, I was probably 100 pound wet. So as one of my friends used to say, we were chum to the, to the Jaws defense. As we, <laughs> as we, I was a scout team, and but uh, the team was good because they were a team. They uh, got along great. Um, they were nice guys, wonderful guys. Now on the field, they'll, they'll pound you. Mm -hmm. But they were wonderful guys. Rick Sang, Greg Jackson, Alan Mayo, Jeff Sloan. Um, I could go on and on with some of the names of the players that just good people. Uh, Gary Thomas and Terry Bell, just wonderful, great guys. But they would pound you, and they, they were aggressive, just like this team is mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, it's one of the great all-time Tomcat teams to come through as Varney. He's throwing, looking for the end zone, and that one will be incomplete, but Belfry will get one more attack at it here. As that one was intended for Woolen, and fourth down now for the Pirates. The pass previous there, he threw a good pass and it was dropped. This one, the guy was, he was open, mm -hmm. uh, but he overthrew him. So now, and so Haywood will take his last time out, but gosh, what a, what a what a playoff run that was, though. Ashland in 1975, and, uh -huh. of course, they'd have a good year again the next year with several players returning. I know your senior year, even though the team was seven, they were a good three and seven team. Um, that game against Greenup County, Greenup would win the at-large in 1977, would lose to Trinity in the overall state final. But, um Man, you guys sure had, I mean, just about any one you played, you gave a good fight. We did. We were we were good. We did well. I enjoyed the season. I got to play every play, so I enjoyed the season. Um, mm -hmm. And my best game was Greenup game, and that was because we were coached very well. They mm -hmm. took splits. The uh, tight ends took an extra split. Frankly, I was outside linebacker, and we were in their backfield all day long. Mm -hmm. And they wow. got really one long pass, mm -hmm. a slant pass behind us that scored. Otherwise, we had them beat. Yes. Also on that team, Dave Arthur, who would, in 1995, lead the Tomcats to a district championship. Varney dropping back. He goes to the end zone. Burt with the catch. No way. Wow. Excellent job by Burt. Great body control. Spins back, adjusts, catches, and Belfry is on the board on the last second of the first half as – Aiden Burke, who's a leading receiver on this team, gets his third reception. So 
Belfry getting that burst of momentum they needed. That is the sixth touchdown pass for Varney on the season. Aiden McCoy will attempt the extra point from the hold of Aiden Burke. And snaps back, it's up and it's good. And he's had over 40 extra points on the year, one of the leading kickers in 3A. So we're going to go to halftime. Ashland leads Belfry 28 to seven. You're watching my on TV. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy, and so much more. You're on the move, you're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now, get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Stay calm, we're on our way. Was that in anime? We are back here on My Town TV. It's halftime, Ashland leading Belfry 28 to seven as Belfry gets a last second play at the end of the first half as quarterback Chase Varney completes a 20 yard pass to Aiden Burke who gets the touchdown. And it's 28 to seven here at halftime. Wow, Tyler Rowland here along with Dwayne Porter and we also want to thank Josh Pack on camera and Caroline Pollum on production tonight. And what a game it has been. Um, wow, what are your thoughts so far, Dr. Porter? Well, they are slipping more. The field is getting wetter. So keep with that 21 point lead, that's gonna help uh, in the second half because uh, it's gonna become more of a running game. I can't see them passing like that as much with the rain as it, it was supposed to stop, but it's, uh, it's coming down pretty strong right now. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm starting to see uh, Everglade type look on the field and little crocodiles and the alligators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting there. It's starting to pour all right as Ashland now ahead. And gosh, just looking through some numbers here. Belfry right now on the ground. They have 55, 67, 96 yards rushing and 49 yards through the air. Um, when you look at that 96 yards rushing for Belfry, this is a team that on the year averages right around 265 rushing yards wow. a game, number six in 3A. So definitely a, a good showing for, for them or for Ashland's defense on that end. And offensively, the Tomcats, 71 yards rushing by 47 of that to Braxton Jennings. He has a touchdown and two first downs as well. Strader with 24 yards and a touchdown, also two first downs. Strader through the air, which is where Ashland has done a majority of the damage, 
completed a 71-yard screen pass to Terrell Jordan, who zigged and zagged his way to the one-yard line first play of the game. Ashland would score on a one-yarder from Braxton Jennings. And then Strader also has touchdown passes of 37 to Braxton Jennings and 44 to Brandon Houston, the number seven ranked receiver in 3A. And what a first half it was. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. With our ease of operations, we have the ability to come to you and we will make it happen for you. I trusted my family to it. I want to help you trust your family to it. It's Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. We're trying to help you make the right call. Okay, yeah, oh, good to, oh, good to see Coach Marty Good up here. And we are back here on My Town TV as Ashland leading 28 to seven at halftime. We just went through the numbers, but one burst of momentum I think that Belfry has going for them, Dr. Porter, is that they will start the yes. second half with possession of the football. Yes, absolutely. And I think uh, what looms large in the game in the first half also was the two fumbles by Belfry. Mm -hmm. um, we we capitalized on both fumbles, and we we got to get more of those, obviously. But you're right; they get the ball back, and with uh, momentum going in, we'll see if they got that uh, lead out of their shoes and concrete off their feet, and see if they're uh, they were hyped up again. I'm sure the coaches over there are getting them ready. Said we are going to come back, and the uh, and Chad's over there telling them just the opposite: this is not going to happen, fellas. We're going mm -hmm. to keep going forward. We're going to score 28 more. Yes, and Chad Tackett, of course, uh, four years coaching at Fairview in the 2000s. He won two district titles in 2003 and 2004. He would get to the regional semis in the playoffs, but for him, this would be the first time that if, he, if Ashland hangs on to win, this would be the first time that Coach Tackett has ever reached the regional finals. Meanwhile, for Belfry, Coach Haywood has not lost a second-round game since 2009. And, wow. And that was a good team, too. That was the team Ashland played them that year. They got up 14 to nothing, 22 to 7. Thomas Varney would lead the team on a huge run in the second half. I believe they missed the two-point conversion that would have tied it. And then Ashland had the ball with a little bit of time left. It was fourth and one. Everybody and their brother in the stadium knew that ball was going to Josh Alber, the big, powerful fullback, and he ca he cashed in getting the first down, and Ashland would get the win at Belfry. But that was a stretch from 2006 to 2011, or where three of the five times that Ashland and Belfry played, or 2012, where three of the five times Ashland played in that period, the game would be decided by two points or less. Um, as, of course, the overtime game we mentioned in 06, the 09 game. In 2011, Belfry would win 7-6 to six in a classic battle at, at, at Belfry. And, of course, 
they would um, Ashlyn would score in the third and miss a two point conversion that ended up being the difference in that game. But uh, when these two schools get together, you know something is always something good is always in the works. So we're going to take a, take another break here and come back. Uh, Tyler Rowland along with Dwayne Porter. You're watching My Town TV. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. They always make you feel like family. When you go there, you feel like you are home. We trust the people that work there. This is my people. Hi, this is Clay from Pollux, and we want to remind you to shop local with us for all of your jewelry needs and jewelry repairs. And remember that Christmas is coming up on us real soon. Thank you all for your support of 148 years. Hey, Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Shop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. It is important to know where your food comes from. We source the best meats from the best animals. We are passionate about the animals and the process by offering custom and USDA processing services. At AW Meat House, we are a cut above the rest. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. We are back here on My Town TV. Uh, Tyler Rowland here along with Dwayne Porter. And what a first half it was. Ashland leading 28 to 7 over Belfry. And this is a. Uh... I was just jamming to the uh, Tomcat band. They were excellent. Yeah. And Dr. Porter, I know that you've dealt a lot with. Um, 
with athletes over the years, and you've trained um, them and had some um, different injuries as – Yes, thank you, Blake. Big thank you to Blake Gillum and <laughs> Tyler Rowland has recovered his keys. So <laughs> very good. Thankfully, my yeah, I literally the key and we went all Tyler's over. Tyler's got so. a big smile on his face right now. He's on his <laughs> keys. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, thank you to Blake Gillum for getting him in the press box, and a big shout out to him and the at Chuck Williams and the Ashland Wrestling Program, and also a shout out to. Our friend Aaron Crabtree watching and big Tomcat fan and glad to, of course, glad to have had the opportunity. We were Tomcats together in the 2000s and and Ashland now coming out and of course Belfry and good to see first off a big shout out to all the Belfry fans tuning in on the thread. Good to have you here and um, but if you're Belfry, I mean you got a breath of fresh air from a good. Touchdown reception. I'd love I'd love to see a replay of that catch. That was just excellent that was body pretty. position. That was pretty. I mean, just good balance by lateral agility by Burke. And now starting the second half, Belfry will have the football and will have a chance to Belfry has to quite get a few it. quite a few faithful fans over there. Came all this way. That's a long drive. In the rain and sitting out here in the rain as well. Yes, what a what a what a game this has been! As if you're just tuning in, Ashland had the ball first, and a, a pass was thrown from LeBryant Strader to to Terrell Jordan. They and he ran. He took the screen pass for 71 yards. Braxton Jennings would score the next play, um, and then on the of course Belfry would. Would go three and out, but then Ashland would get the, get a first down, go three and out. Belfry would fumble, though, after getting three first downs. And uh, they started the drive from their one, and Ashland would capitalize on that with a 37-yard pass from LeBryant Strader to Braxton Jennings. And then uh, would miss the PAT 13-0. Then late in the first half, after some bounce back and – play um, Ashland would score again and in every Ashland victory this year they have had a 40 yard touchdown pass 40 plus yarder to Brandon Houston so he gets a 44 yard reception and Ashland goes up to uh, would convert the two pointer on a pass to Braxton Jennings and go up 21 nothing however of course um, the next play Belfry would come back out would fumble Ashland would get it and four plays later, a one-yard plunge from LeBron Strader. Belfry, though, they don't quit. They got, went right down the field, scored on fourth and ten before half, a connection from Chase Varney to um, to Aiden Burke. And, of course, the Dr. Porter, gosh, you know, because I first um, – I remember first coming to you my sophomore year in high school and um, and the work you did with me and – um, I'd come and work out with you a lot. What, what advice do you give? Because you had a successful football career and as well, and what advice do you usually give athletes on on training? Well, first of all, I think you've got some kind of memory card in your head and, and a calculator in the back of there in your <laughs> cerebellum somewhere. But uh, <laughs> um, ad advice, um, stay healthy you got to eat as well. Eating is just as much part. I've got a master's degree in nutrition, and we teach uh, proper nutrition to the players. And as they get into college and pros, they'll see also that nutrition is is 50% of it, and they're going to kick off. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, another squib and Cottle running over, and he lets that good heady play by Cottle. He was wanting to pick it up, but he realized the, the yardage situation and what could happen. Um, so instead, he... He lets it go out of bounds, and Ace, Ace Cottle. It's one thing about this kid too, only a fre and I was like, yeah, only a freshman. Wow. So, gosh, you know he's he has a bright now. I mean, your first game as a varsity player, running for 180 yards on a very good Pulaski County team. You know he's going to have a future. As we mentioned, just like his father and his uncle, both of whom were 1,000 yard rushers at Belfry as it's going to be first and 10 for the Pirates here starting the second half. Usually for Belfry, when they have a wide-out receiver, they're usually basically just a, a ghost <laughs> because you, <laughs> never, you never see them much. But they have passed to them tonight. Yes, as, as 
Hatfield gets his seventh carry, and he's going to gain three yards. Again, Hatfield only 23 carries coming into this game and seven so far tonight. Of course, Belfry missing. Dre Young, one of their key runners, almost 900 yards and on the year for him as it's now second down for the Pirates. Here as Willem in motion, handed off to Hatfield again. Dang, the big guy's moving and he's gonna get the first down and then a, quite a few more as he gets from the 37. That's going to be a gain of 16. He's up to 48 yards now as Isaiah Ingram was in on that stop. There's a cross block on the two big linemen for the two big guards in center for Belfry that time. Open mm -hmm. that hole up. And that was a, gosh, yeah, that was a great push up front, great carry. That's, that's the first double digit carry for Hatfield and uh, probably what Coach Haywood's hoping to do is to wear Ashland down. Why not give it to him again? And the big guy's gonna carry it for six or seven more. I think they got talked to at halftime, Belfry did, because they're, uh, they're more aggressive. They're coming off mm -hmm. the ball. They're firing off the ball right now. And Tay Thomas on and that's Belfry is not out of this game, so they that definitely is a little boost of momentum from here. Second and five for Belfry now here with as Hatfield has had all three touches for them coming out of the coming out of the locker room. And it's handed off. Why not Edens. again? <laughs> Edens is all over that. So Hatfield now with his. And one thing about Belfry is over the years, seeing some of the fullbacks that they've had, I mentioned like Dustin May in 2006. Um, one of them that I like to watch, this kid was a load in 2012 when they put Trinity Carr. Um, just I had remember. an unbelievable balance just with how he would, he, he'd fall down, push himself up, and crawl forward for a couple more <laughs> yards. He was, and, and on top of that, very difficult to tackle, very good fullback. As Varney. They got him. And it, oh, second effort. Gonna be close, yeah. and I don't think. That was a late whistle. Well, but not late whistle, it was a correct whistle. Just, he kept driving. And the. The big guy Hatfield with 20, all 23 of Belfry's yards on this drive. Fourth and one now for the Pirates. Belfry coach is not one to take a lot of risk. Uh, yeah. It's gonna go, somebody's going up the middle. They're going the yeah. A gap. Yeah, they're either probably gonna sneak it to Barney or Go to Hatfield again. Yes. And sure enough, Hatfield. they go to Hatfield, and he's going to get the first down. Hatfield, some inspired football, and he gets the team's second first down of this half. The senior is not going to go away as he wants to get this team back in contention. To, he, he wants to take this program to their third state title in four years. <laughs> Absolutely. As that's uh, – Two first downs for the big fella this half now. As they're on the Ashland 36, Hatfield has had every carry for Belfry this half. Woolham in motion, this time handed to Cottle. He has room left side, and he gets drugged down by Jennings. Ace Cottle, though, he gets eight yards. And, and the freshman now with his fourth carry. Cottle had one of about 20 yards earlier that was called back for holding. So second and two for Belfry now is. Right now is the time to get up for Ashland and change the momentum. Let's get mm -hmm. it back. Belfry now over four minutes on this drive. Belfry, of course, predicated on clock control in their games as Varney's going to pass and a quick throw. It's yes! Oh. That's what they needed right there. Varney, only needed. his third interception uh -oh, of the there's year. Oh, flag. Oh, Ashland out on the field again. So that's likely, you know, that they want Ashland had a sideline warning earlier. That's okay. They got the interception. <laughs> <laughs> so an unfortunate break for Belfry as that will be an interception, but they may get, get a little bit from the penalty that will move Ashland back as Ashland was – 
So, so Ashland, uh, second, it will be penalized. That's our second sideline warning. They needed that. This one. Yeah, that was a Belfry was getting some serious okay, momentum. So Ashland now will take over first and 10. They'll start with it at the 25 here as where's the, in the second half, 28-7, Ashland lead. That's going to be Jennings and Strader in the backfield. Houston, Jordan, and Adkins at wide out. Freeze at tied it. Adkins in motion, and he's going to get the ball. No, Strader's going good to carry play. it up the middle and that good agility. A, good play call. Yeah, I was once in, in college, mm -hmm. and, and I hit a guy after the after the uh, play was uh, done and the whistles were blown, and I I, I punched a guy and got five-yard penalty, and uh, the coach told me, ripped me, and then the other coach got me over there and said, he goes, that's okay. Sometimes we need that to fire us up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. That's true. Sometimes a play like that can get a team to play out of their mind. Yes. As that's handed off, Jennings up the middle now, and he's going to get four. Jennings off for close to a first down. That's his 10th carry. He has two first downs, a touchdown. Also, what a grab on a two-point conversion. He had third and one. And an a tip interception. Yeah, oh, yeah, the interception too, yeah. And it tipped. He had to tip Which it to himself, huge. I believe. Ashland, who hasn't had a lot of interceptions this year either. They're toward the, the bottom tier of 3A in that category as it's going to be third and one for the Tomcats now. As Strader and Jennings have it, and Strader's going to run it up, and the big guy's going to get the first down and then a yard. Strader's third first down, rushing the ball, and that'll be a fresh set of downs now for the Tomcats. And Hatfield was in on that tackle as well. <laughs> yes, I, I, Strader, Hatfield. Hatfield doing what the great seniors do. Uh, taking command of things as um, and boy and other scores Boyd trailing Boyle County 43 to 7 at halftime Boyle County who has been a force in 4A this year Boyd though a great year for them district championship as Jennings carries it he's going to get a couple gosh somebody was in did a really good job getting in position and that, that was Deskins with the tackle. Deskins has been a – Varney, Coach Varney really bragged on him when we talked the other day. Second and seven, and understandably so. Second and seven now for Ashland. That was a really good job getting in position as you now Ashland resorting to that run game here in the second half. I don't know if number seven, Alex Long, the cornerback over here, is, uh, he may be very good, but he's got a white uniform, which means he just came in. So mm -hmm. good time to try to burn him. Mm -hmm. And Ashland, ooh, ooh, looks like a misread on that play, a quick throw. Strader has a 58% completion percentage on the year, still six of eight tonight with 178 yards. Chase Varney on the coverage on that play. Are you allowed to put water on the other team's sidelines more than where the, they have to walk in the mud on the sidelines? Yeah. So, <laughs> so they get it caught in their cleats? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that's legal. I don't, I don't think right sometimes. <laughs> but you want the edge, mm -hmm. whatever that edge yeah. can be. Five wide set for Ashland now. Terrell Jordan in motion, and and Strader will carry it up the middle. The wow. big spins, Wow. Still on his feet, yes. and he's going to get a first down. Wow, gain of 13 yards and Strader's fourth first down rushing the ball. 44 on the, Ashland with 98 yards on the ground and it's another first down on this drive. Ashland is not, I don't think they've sent a man in motion out of five wide this year. They haven't run it a lot, but um, they did pick up a big first down on a quarterback draw against Russell where the, of course the big man would run for about 25 yards and get Ashland deep into to Russell territory. Russell, who Belfry beat in the first round. Again, if you've seen their year, the, I'm not kidding you, maybe the best two and nine team ever as, yes. as Austin Nichols will carry it and Nichols will get three. 
Nichols, who had 16, a 16-yard 16 touchdown run, his first of the season last week against McGoffin County. Nichols, who primarily blocks, although he has shown the ability to run at times. As it's, uh, He's tough. Yeah. Nichols, who picked up two big first downs against Elizabethtown and a 27-25 win for Ashland earlier this year. And I say huge, especially in the fact when you consider that Elizabethtown is a top five rushing defense in 3A. Ashland, who's Nichols has a legacy yeah. as his father was and his, and his uncles were great Ashland players. And his mm -hmm. grandfather, Carl, was a great Ashland player with me. Yeah, so that's going to be fake to Jennings. They're going to go to Brandon Houston and picked off. Who else? Burke looked like. I think that the Hatfield might have gotten in the backfield he on did. that and pressured the pass. He did. He got a good hit, a lick on him, and uh, I don't know if he deflected the ball, but he definitely changed the arc of the throw. So Belfry, a big play to keep them in. That is only Strader's fifth interception this year. He's thrown the ball 204 times now. Wow. So That's good. Yeah, the That's soft. impressive. The sophomore really having a good year. A great play by Burke. Burke, who also had the touchdown catch in the first half. The lead at Burke, the, who leads Belfry in receptions. Varney hands it off at the middle. No, it's the option. He's going to pitch it to Woolham right side. Woolham's going to get four, maybe five. Caden Woolham now up to 60 yards rushing on the night. Isaiah Ingram on the stop. They like that uh, option, that mm -hmm. um, end round option. Second and four is a 19. I guess it's a flanker around option more. Yeah, it's a unique look. Woolham, who's now, Woolham needs 29 yards to get to 1,000 on the season. As that's handed off to the fullback, and no doubt about it, Hatfield and about four or five guys with him will get about three more. We well, can see where my age came from. I just used the word flanker. I don't think they've used flanker in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they call them slots. <laughs> yeah. it's, a neat, it's a unique look. I've seen Lawrence County runs a lot of that same offense as well, and looks like some. Looks like we have a player cramping up. So, um, okay, good. He's back. That's Landon Himes. He's back on his feet. He plays with emotion. Yeah, Himes is, that kid is special. He's done a lot of good things for this Ashland team. 41 tackles for losses this Ashland Tomcat team has had in 2022. And they've gotten better in that, that as the season has gone along. They had 47 last year in terms of tackles for loss as Himes being stretched out on the sideline now. Hopefully he'll be good to go here in a few plays. So Belfry breaking huddle now. That's um, in the backfield. That's Varney Hatfield at the fullback position. And of course you've got Woolham and back, Woolham and Cottle back there as well. Man in motion, and that's going to go to Hatfield. Gang tackle. I like that. And then, yeah, they they um, but Hatfield will get three and a first down. Everybody get a piece of them. That's what you want. Landon Eden and Tay Thomas on the stop. That is one, two, three first downs for the big man. And 66 yards on, uh, for him as well. As Woolham right side, and the ball comes out. And Colin Howard's going to scoop it. He's going to run and come close almost. Colin Howard, who scored a recovering a blocked punt earlier this season, but Colin Howard, what a play for the young guy, and he's hyped up and oh, nearly scores a, a second touchdown. That would have been amazing to see. Yes. Howard, who was injured some this season, only a sophomore, but he yes. has played some outstanding football. I know this is only four yards, but this is very important. It it's is. Big. Yeah, big play coming up for Ashland here. You can go to fourth quarter with 28 points. It'll be hard to make that up. It will. Yeah, that. At the but line, I guess if any as any Saturday morning quarterback 
that watches football always says the same thing. Don't don't play. Um. And oh, Ashland's third pre-snap penalty tonight. They have two false starts and uh, an offsides. So what was a first and goal from the four is now first and goal from the nine. Yeah, that's not good. I was going to say we don't we don't want to play prevent defense. We don't want to just run mm -hmm. the ball and run the clock out. Um, you know, keep playing your offense the way you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do, yeah, do what got you here. As, Absolutely. As Adkins and Houston are at wide out, Nichols and Jennings are in the backfield with Strader. And Strader's going to hand it off to Jennings. He has room. He's going to cut back, but I thought he had more room than he actually did. And that was number 55, Braden Spears, one of the five seniors that play defense for Belfry on the tackle. And a three-yard gain for Jennings. So second and goal from the six for Ashland here is wearing the third Deep in the third quarter, that is Asher Atkins is at the top but wide out. And Jordan, Terrell Jordan, Brandon Houston on the bottom as it's just straighter Nick or Jennings now. Jennings on Get the out. counter play He's gets into it. the He's end zone. It. Congratulations to Braxton Jennings. 1,000 yards on the season uh -huh. for the sophomore and, and his touchdown. 17th yeah. touchdown rushing on this season. And now Ashland taking a 34 to 7 lead. Wow, 63 yards and two scores on the night for Jennings. And well deserving, well deserving. Yes, he is going to be a special athlete as Church now getting ready to kick for Ashland. And it's up and yeah, perfect. good. Ashland leads 35-7 with 34.6 seconds to go in the third. We'll be right back. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Shop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy, crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. They always make you feel like family. When you go there, you feel like you are home. We trust the people that work there. This is my people. There's water everywhere. Stay calm. We're on our way. We are back in a Southern Squib kit. Cottle recovers, and Cottle met by Five. a wall of Tomcat defenders. <laughs> Five guys were on him. That was Eden. Seems like I'm calling Isaiah Luckett's name every time on a kickoff. Um, Nichols got back there. Yep. Um, I see. Let's see, just looking at, just looking at all the players. Of course, Sam Lyons, who also got to play some offense last week, and. Ride a Rucker, Rucker who unfortunately last week had his first career touchdown called back due to holding, but we know he'll, that young man will get, be a great athlete. He sure had a good Kiwanis Bowl as it's first and 10 for Belfry here. Belfry who's had three turnovers, fumbling the ball tonight as it's handed off to Hatfield. No, it's going to be a pitch and that's going to be a care. Braxton Jennings gets there and makes the play. That kick that's Caden Varney, number 23, on the play. That kickoff team's like letting a bunch of dogs loose off their collar. They're hungry, <laughs> just charging yeah. downfield. Yeah, that's, they are. That is a great example of <laughs> on the kickoff. So the end of three, Ashland leading 35 to seven. We'll be right back. You're watching My Town TV. Hey, this is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. With our ease of operations, we have the ability to come to you and we will make it happen for you. I trusted my family to it. I want to help you trust your family to it. It's Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. And we're trying to help you make the right call.
People's Bank's vision is to be the best community bank in America. We strive to use our knowledge, talents, and resources to improve the quality of life in our communities. This year, People's Bank is celebrating our 120th anniversary by delivering 120 acts of kindness. These acts of kindness bring us just as much joy as to those that receive them. People's Bank, working together, building success. I've watched many games on. Right, yes, we are back here now, second and six for Belfry starting the fourth quarter. They had some success moving the ball, but two turnovers, one an interception inside Ashland territory, the other a fumble, which Ashland recovered at the four and would score their next touchdown, which Braxton Jennings would pass 1,000 yards Fun on the deep. season, a double pump, and that goes past Burke. But um, that was a nice one. They, they, because they've been running those short routes, they tried. They faked the out route to Burke. He cuts it up deep. Might have had a half step, but um, a good job to hold coverage. And, and now Varney is one, two, three, four, five of thirteen. Throw the ball. That's good coverage by Nine. Khalil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, third and six. Belfry needs to get past their thirty-five to get the first down. Varney, and it's going pitch to be pitched. Woolham, Woolham, right side. He has room, and he'll get uh, out of bounds. No, 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 don't throw it. Don't throw it. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, trying to get the close. official to throw. Yep. Woolham, he's still, you can see the intensity. He really, Woolham, a real fighter. He's not going to. He's pleading his case. He's tough, yeah. He he absolutely is going to keep fighting to get Belfry back in this game as he's up to 73 yards on the ground now and three first downs for him. That's his third carry for double digits. Um, this is actually only the third time this year that Woolham has touched the ball 10 or more times in a game. The other time is being Lawrence County where he carried it 10 times for I think 56 yards and Russell where he had over 305 touchdowns on 16 carries. Of course, Belfry missing a great back of Dre Young as this one's thrown in. Good, good play. Good play. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Be, uh, okay. I was afraid of that. Yeah, it looks like he got just a tough. Yeah. I hate that. He's being aggressive. I like the aggressiveness. And that'll be a personal foul against. Oh, actually, how? Looks like they're calling it. He he indicated as if it was helmet to helmet contact, more uh, than a light hit. Oh, okay. So he pointed at his. I see. So that that's more. What it was looks like, and so that'll be a Belfry will have a fresh set of downs Ooh. in Ashland territory. It's Fifteen. Off the play. Ooh. Oh. So they're at the Ashland 43 now. First and 10 for the Pirates. I don't think I could ever be a, a high school coach because I'd have the players, they'd be a personal foul every play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you play football. It's the aggressive part. It's, it's uh, sometimes a killer be killed attitude mm -hmm. if you wish. Yeah, that's, that's the type of, like, I love like the aggression that Hatfield, that Woolham shows like yeah. when they're out there. Um, it just makes, I mean, those types of players are what your team really, really needs. Like those guys that really have the emotion and just try to make something big happen. No matter Ingram what and Eden, is. they're like that as and well. And the ball comes out. Himes gets it, and he's, uh, oh, it comes out again. Jared Brown, though, gets it. Go, Jared, Brown go. to the 30, to the 20. He's going to get to the 10-yard line. That is Belfry's fourth fumble that Ashland has recovered. Again, yes. I will emphasize, this wow. is an Ashland team that is toward the bottom of 3A and fumble recoveries. In fact, four recovered fumbles by Ashland all season. Four fumbles recovered tonight. And for, unfortunately, in Belfry's case, all of them, Ashland was able to get in their territory. So That, that old saying, how the ball bounces, it bounced right up into his hands in Jared wow. Brown's. Yeah, Brown, that's, <laughs> wow. 
almost ran one back as Ashland now first and goal for the 10. Tay Thomas is now in the backfield. That's Adkins, Jordan, and Houston at wide out freeze at tight end. And it's handed off to Tay Thomas for his first carry. He's going to plunge through for five. And Thomas, not a lot of carries this year. Not, he, he's more utilized on defense, but Thomas, who picked up 113 yards rushing against Elizabethtown, a top five team, a top five rushing defense in 3A. Thomas has 367 yards and four touchdowns on the season. He's or played some good defense. So, yeah. He's played He's good tonight as well. Thomas, who also blocked a punt against East Carter that Colin Howard would recover in the end zone for a score. And it's handed off to Nichols, looking up the middle. Nichols is close. And just no, oh, inches away. So Nichols, his second carry. And Struther and Hurley on the stop for Belfry. So third and goal from the one for the Ashland Tomcats. Do you feel safe with 42 to seven lead? Um, <laughs> I'd go for two if I were just to get, if Ashland scores, I, yeah. I would go for two to get the running clock. Um, as it's Thomas and Strader in the backfield. Strader, his second rushing touchdown of the game, 45 yards on the ground for him. And Ashland now a 41 to seven lead uh, with 9.25 here remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll see what Coach Tackett decides to do. I think he's going to go for two. I would. I would too. Yeah. yeah. That's. I mean. I know Belfry coach will remember this years later when says you're running up score on him, but no, you're not because Belfry can score quick. It's yeah. This two point conversion. The thing about it is it would give Ashland a running clock, which would be huge, and that because that that would pretty much. That Ashland coming out in maroon formation, the wing tee they like to run. That's Jennings, Nichols, and Jordan at the wing. Houston's he's isolated. Come back wide around. Out. I've seen it. I, and, oh, he's going to pass. Oh, it's a pass, and it's thrown to Frio. Oh. Incomplete. Free good play. <laughs> yeah, that was a good design. As, as, so Ashland, a 41 7 lead. We're going to take a break and come back. You're watching My Town TV. Bones, love saving money? B-Dubs gives you more with buy one, get one free boneless wings on boneless Thursdays. So keep the bones in your wallet and out of your chicken. The win-win value lineup at Buffalo Wild Wings. Get takeout or delivery. We are back as Brandon Houston kicks it off. It's recovered by Belfry. Noah Brown fields it as Belfry will start with good field position. Ashland went for two to try to get the running clock, unable to convert. That was the first time they came out in that maroon. We call it, well, it's called, not called maroon. They started running it in, they, they started running it in 2006 after Josh Cordell had a big scrimmage against Ironton <laughs> that year, that they tried to put something in for him to, of course, he had a lot of guys. They had him, Fields Davis, Matt Thomas, um, who could all run the ball effectively. But they, mm -hmm. that formation, Dane Dameron, uh, who coached at Boyd County, was oh, actually yeah. big and in innovating that. And Ashland has run it, um, although this is the first year they've run that since 2019. But I remember that um, crew. Yeah, that was uh. Ashton looks still hungry. They're yeah, they're coming off the ball. The Hatfield with good play. No, that's a uh, Woolham, and he's drugged down. That's looks like Eden got in there. Ingram, and looks like Cam Davis had him by the by the foot. 
Braxton Jennings, though, who achieved 1,000 yards this season. Congratulations to him, the 35th Tomcat to achieve that mark in a, in a single season. The first, actually the first 1,000 yard rusher on record is Burt Johnson. He would run, have back to back 1,000 yard seasons at Ashland in 1931 and 1932. Oh, <laughs> so that's a big honor for you have no stats in front of you either, Tyler. That's impressive. <laughs> oh, You're doing this out of memory. <laughs> has caught a left side. He's got room, and the freshman's going to going to keep it going. And Cottle now gets to the down, and we're going to Eden's. take a break and come back. Looks like he he's Eden's being tended down. to. There's Strauka. He's being stretched. We're okay. we're going to take a quick break. You're watching My Town TV. Whether it's a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. We are back here on My Town TV as it's first and 10 for Belfry. Now the, the, on the Ashton 38, Ace Cottle gets the, his third first down of the game rushing as Varney drops back to throw. He's looking for the deep ball and it's incomplete. I think he was expecting somebody to be in the, to be deep. And Belfry tonight has thrown the ball. They've, they have 52 pass attempts. Or, or Varney has 52 pass attempts on the season. Tonight he has 15 as now it's second and 10 and a quick timeout for Ashland. We'll be right back. You're watching My Town TV. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug, your hometown pharmacy and so much more. a snack when you're heading out or restocking when you're heading home, Clark's Pump and Chop is the winning stop. From drinks to our awesome crispy crunchy chicken, Clark's has the best selection, the best prices, and the best staff you'll find anywhere. Clark's Pump and Chop. Return, refresh, refuel. We are back here on My Town TV as, as now Belfry is still in timeout. Um, second and ten for the Pirates. Here as they they're Still talking things over here, but what a what a shock it's been as Ashland um, was expected to be a close game. Ashland leading 41 to seven here in the fourth quarter. Now as you it's know, a big shout out to Cole Christian and Colin Howard, the two down linemen. They mm -hmm. played a heck of a game. They they, they have. controlled that line all night defense. Yeah, this one this will be a. To a run for Kit Woolen, but that's going to come back for holding. Just when I was about to congratulate, well, I'll hear in a <laughs> moment, but um, uh, that's going to go against Belfry. Belfry's second holding penalty on the game. They have four penalties, uh, grounding, two holding penalties, and a false start here as that one's going to be moved back. We'll see where the 
10 yards from the spot. So what was a, uh, going to be a first and 10 is now second and 20. So now Belfry coming back out. And that'll be Cottle, um, Hatfield, and Warm in the backfield. He's going 127 pounds, Cottle. Wow. And Go! Hassett's good play, good defense. Intended for Berg, and Burke, Burke frustrated at that drop. Khalil. Yeah. Five straight incompletions for Varney after the 20 yard touchdown pass to conclude the first half. Third and 20 now for Belfry. They will need to get past the Ashland 29 to get the first down. Um, Khalil Vaughn has played a heck of a game out there at the, the cornerback's position. And the ball's fumbled again. Another one, another one that's Thomas it. That's gets what it. we need. Another Belfry turnover. Ashland recovering more fumbles in the game tonight than they have all season as Belfry again turns it over and Ashland will take over first and 10 on the 46 yard line of Belfry here with 7.36 to go in the fourth quarter. You want to be on the positive side of those turnovers and that's what mm -hmm. Ashland's done tonight. And they've taken advantage mm -hmm. of each one of them. They have, yes, and, and Belfry. Um, Ashland's only had one turnover. Actually, their first turnover since the Russell game, I believe, um, they had an interception, a great job by Hatfield to force the pressure, and Burke would pick it up. Good time off. to throw one all the way down the field. Ashland, yeah. I know as, they're gonna run yeah. it because they wanna get mm -hmm. ready, they wanna run that clock out, but. yeah. Still, a, 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 yeah, doing that, throwing it. With, if Ashland did get into the end zone as Hatfield again on the stop, that would give the running clock, and um, which takes effect at a 36-point lead. So now second and 10 for the Tomcats here. Of course, though, Ashland quite content to understandably hang on to the ball here as is now... Well, I wore the wrong shoes tonight. They're soaking wet. <laughs> <laughs> squish, squish. <Yeah. laughs> and Tay Thomas, who recovered the fumble, will remain in the backfield. And it's snapped, handed off. Tay Thomas again. Wow. He's going to go up the middle. Ashen flying. Cole Christian. Blew his guy mm -hmm. off the ball. Jake Varney. <clears throat> Varney and Spears. I thought Austin got in on that as well for Belfry. So third and nine for the Tomcats. They'll need to get to about the Belfry 36 to get the first down. <clears throat> well, even if you can't get it here, you can punt it and get it down the other end. That can kill some time as well. Has Ashland mm -hmm. punted tonight? Once. Wow. But yeah, that, that, and that was where they... They got it to the one-yard line. Both teams that's had right. to start that's from the right. one at some point in tonight's game. You're right. <clears throat> Ironically, that's – Ashland, although they're in two down territory, counter play. Thomas has his hole. He gets close to the first down. He didn't quite get there. That'll be fourth and about two – well, actually three more so for Ashland. So Spears again on the stop for Belfry. Cole Christian <clears throat> pulled that time and, and hit Hatfield in the backfield and drew – Drove him, drove him back another five mm -hmm. yards. I like him. Yeah. Cole Christian, and a fun fact Boy, about him, his brother yeah. Zane, of course, who was a big part of that 20, 20 state championship team, and Zane spends a lot of time still mentoring him and going through plays. To And Cole, of course, has come on and done a great job He's for this time. He Cat looks team. good. He Fourth down now as we approach the five-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Nichols in the backfield, and it's going to be straighter up the middle. Ooh. Left side, he spins, and the big guy's going to carry the ball for the first down. Holy but moly. Right, that, was straighter. A, that was a heck of a play. An eight-yard run for and, straighter. And he got stuck right, right at the line of scrimmage. 11 carries for 53 yards, and that's right on his average per carry, right around five a carry this year and the big fella has carried it for four let's see 
One, two, three, four, five first downs for Ashland, um, along with two touchdowns tonight. And that's just running the ball. Passing, he's six for eight for 178 <laughs> yards with two scores on that end. Not a bad night. Uh oh, Yeah, as Ashland now goes to the two-back set with Nichols and Thomas. And it's handed off counter play to Nichols. Go and Austin. he's Go got Austin. room. Austin, Austin Nichols. Oh, he broke loose of, after getting the first down. And that will be his season long of, I'm going to say that's a, uh, let's see exactly where it's spotted. His long was last week of 16 yards. And he got 19 on that play. Austin's a junior as well. The future mm -hmm. looks bright. It's a very young and two very young teams going at it here today. Some have said that possibly the youngest teams in 3A going at it. Of course, Belfry uh, in the state championship game at the middle school level once again, and we'll have another 20-plus freshman next season that I anticipate will be in contention for some playing time as counter play to, to Tay Thomas, and he goes up the middle. Carrying defenders, and he's going to get close to a first down for Ashland. That'll be a gain of nine for him. Fifth carry now. He has 21 yards. Ashland with 169 on the ground. As Blake Hurley was in on that stop. And Belfry, uh, uh, Belfry right around the middle of the, uh, 3A in rushing defense. 162 yards a game. Ashland has 169 right now as it's going to be second and one for the Tomcats here. It's getting to be about that time to start looking for the Gatorade jugs and start to dump the Gatorade jug on Coach. Yes, Chad Tackett, <laughs> who will have his first ever trip to the regional finals, his first season at Ashland, his fifth season overall coaching as it goes to Tay Thomas up the middle and touchdown. he's going to get in for touchdown number four. Tay Thomas, and he and the, the sophomore now with the and Ashland's. Gosh, let's see. They have one, two, three, four, five rushing touchdowns in this game. As this has now triggered a running clock situation. So even though they're going for the PAT, the clock continuing to run as it is. And as the Tomcats take a 47 to seven lead, Brian Church. Uh -huh. Come in, hold is coming from Brandon Houston. Troy Gardner, the- It's okay, it kills a little bit more time. <laughs> wrestler, uh, yeah, Troy Gardner had a great game against McGoffin on the snap. And Church's kicks up down the middle and we're gonna keep it here. But uh, Ashland with a 48 to seven lead over Belfry. And gosh, what a, I'm overwhelmed. What a game for these I Tomcats. I am overwhelmed. They, they played their hearts out. They took it from the very beginning. They had a game plan. They've been aggressive the entire night, and they deserve the win. They deserve it. As Ashland will improve to eight and four, as we'll have a on this game. But gosh, what a season and what a fine season for Belfry. Nothing to be ashamed of for this young team. Second place in 3A District Eight, and this is actually hard to believe. I mean, Belfry's last first round loss or second round loss in the playoffs came in 2009. Of course, that was with a very good team led by Thomas Varney. But Belfry, of course, a, I mean, year in and year out, they're in contention. I mean, Coach Haywood, 472 wins for him. And actually, it was 50 years ago when Haywood first competed against Ashland in the state finals as an assistant coach under the late, great Roy Walton, who had state championships in 1972 and 1978 at Lexington Tates Creek, 219 wins. And Haywood was an assistant for him before he would go to Prestonsburg and then Belfry in the 1980s, where he continues to be a great, great coach as Cottle now gets the kickoff return. Turn out the lights. The and Cottle nope. goes and he gets drugged down. The party's great. over. And but Ashland, uh, a great, yeah, that, a great win for Ashland. Yes, though, as, indeed. As as Belfry uh, finishes their season at six and six, Ashland improves to eight and four. And congratulations to head coach Chad Tackett for his first ever trip to the regional finals as a head coach. 
Ashland, who are as the champions of 3A District 7, will advance, and the RPI will be used to seed the remaining teams. If I had to guess, it's very likely that Ashland will be either at Mason County or at Bell County coming up for the regional championships. So we will keep you updated on that. But a big congratulations to the Tomcats and also congratulations for, to Belfry on their season. We're going to take a break and come back for post-game analysis here on My Town TV. People's Bank's vision is to be the best community bank in America. We strive to use our knowledge, talents, and resources to improve the quality of life in our communities. This year, People's Bank is celebrating our 120th anniversary by delivering 120 acts of kindness. These acts of kindness bring us just as much joy as to those that receive them. People's Bank, working together, building success. This is Greg Gibson with Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. With our ease of operations, we have the ability to come to you and we will make it happen for you. I trusted my family to it. I want to help you trust your family to it. It's Greg Gibson Insurance and Financial Services. And we're trying to help you make the right call. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program, with walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. At Gillum Drug, we are more than just a community pharmacy offering an unrivaled experience with excellent customer service. So why would you go anywhere else? Gillum Drug your hometown pharmacy, and so much more. And we are back here on My Town TV. Ashland defeats Belfry 48-7 to to win this playoff game here. Ashland will be in the final eight, something that we would have never thought at the beginning of the season when we watched them struggle early on. Ashland, who lost to Raceland 34-7, to and then also had a 49-7 loss to Wheelersburg, who plays a similar style to Belfry with the power running game. So Ashland, wow, what a night. We'll run through some final numbers, starting with Belfry. I feel bad for Caden Woolen because that touchdown, or that first down he got on a, that run at the, near the end, that would have been his thousandth yard on the season, and it got called back to holding. <laughs> so, but 73 yards on 10 carries for him. Braxton Hatfield had 69 on 16. Um, and, then, and then let's see, we had Ace Cottle had 34 on five, and Caden Varney had one rush for four. Let's see, that is 180 yards on the ground for Belfry, 49 through the air. Varney threw it 16 times for 49 yards and a touchdown and an interception. He would complete three of his first four passes, but would only complete one of his next 12 as he, he went, um, as he would go, um, as he would have a touch, but of course a great touchdown pass before the half. And on Ashland's end, LeBriant Strader, six for nine on the game, oh. 178 yards, Strikes uh, 71 yards on the first play of the game to Terrell Jordan. A 37-yard touchdown pass to Braxton Jennings and a 44-yarder to, uh, to Brandon Houston. And again, every Ashland win, Houston has had a 40-plus yard reception. Um, running the ball, Jennings had 63 on 15 with carries, or 13 carries with two touchdowns to pick up his 17th rushing touchdown and become the 35th 
running back to hit 1,000 yards in a season at Ashland. Rushing as Strader had 53 yards on 11 carries, two scores. Nichols had 28 yards rushing the ball on three attempts. Thomas had 25 on six receiving for Ashley. And actually with Belfry, I didn't go through receptions. Burke had three for 32 with a touchdown reception before halftime. Woolham had one for three. Ace Cottle had one for for 14. And for Ashland, though, receiving, Terrell Jordan had one for 71, a screen pass. Jennings had one for 37, a touchdown. Asher Adkins had one for five. And Brandon Houston finished with three for 65. His second reception also making this the first Ashland team to have three receivers on it with 30 plus receptions in the same season. So, man, Dr. Porter, what a night. That was a beautiful night, an impressive night, absolutely all the way around. And as you just said, I believe you said they were 40 yards under their normal was what Ashland held Belfry to rushing. Let's see. At um, least, I think at good. least 40 yards. Yeah, Belfry, that's a you good point. You said it was about 220 a game. Yeah, our, yeah, Belfry averages, let's see, 265 a game, oh, number six in 3A. Ashland held them to 180, so that's 80 a yards. big. yes. Wow. That's a big, and Ashland even held them below as many times as they threw. Belfry averages around, I believe, 52 yards a game through the air. They have a, let's see. Or no correction, they are, or wait, let's see here. I don't know I've got mine on. Yeah, 53 yards a game passing, um, which is number 31 out of 37 teams in 3A. But uh -huh. they don't throw much, but they average 21 yards of completion. So that's uh, when they make a completion, it's a big strike. So definitely big for Ashland to hold them below their average on that end, given how many times they threw. I don't think it was the field that held them up. I mean, the field was wet, but mm -hmm. uh, it's wet for both teams, and it was fumble, fumbleitis. Yeah, yeah, it was very unfortunate scenario for Belfry as they had several fumbles and also threw an interception. And the interception came at a crucial time because Belfry, uh, Braxton Hatfield had manned Belfry into Ashland territory. And then they threw that interception on second and four, short, but Ashland would. Um, they were driving yeah. at the time, Belfry was, yes. Yeah, that was big because they, they'd stop Ashland, then Belfry would get the ball back again, and this time fumble it where Ashland would recover the ball deep in Belfry territory on the four-yard line. So, well, wow. This will very likely, unless a massive upset occurs on the side of Bell County or Mason County, this will very likely be La Ashland's last home game. But, man, Dr. Porter, what a yeah. what a night, man. What an well, atmosphere. I am truly blessed to be here tonight. I think it was uh, – thank you for the invitation. It was very intimidating to do this. <laughs> you <laughs> but, did terrific. Uh, I, uh, I enjoyed myself tremendously. This was very fun. And, and it was especially fun. We just won by 41 points. Yes, a big win, a very good. Made our entire Belfry city team. proud. Yes, that was, yeah, to beat Belfry, because there's very few teams that, I mean, this 6-6 six and six Belfry team is, I mean, they defeated Louisville Central, who's very good. Of course, they gave Lawrence County everything they wanted in the district. Um, I mean, this is a special team for um, a special program. They'll definitely be back. Um and you never know, a 5-5 five and five Belfry team. Last year was a 5-5 five and five Belfry team that ended up winning it all. And this young crew, they'll have these guys back. They'll be, um, I mean, they'll have a crew coming up that at the minimum will be in the middle school state championship games. So they've got a lot that they're going to, um, to be excited about over these coming years. But we thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you to Josh Pack on camera here. Thank you to Caroline Pullum, Alex New, everybody that's, helped out with the Tomcats this year. Thank you to Chris Pullum for all the work that he's done helping this team and this program out and everything he's done for My Town TV that may not always show up on, on camera. And a big thank you to also some of our fellow broadcasters, Mike Miller, to Brian Barber, to Matt Anderson, to some of the people that have really been a huge part of our program this year. And, of course, Thank you, Dr. Porter, and we're going to say um, good night, everybody. Check local media. We will keep you updated on regional final games 
God bless everybody. Good night.